Hi, welcome to the Digital Pathology Place. I'm Alexandra Zhurak and if this is your first time here, please consider subscribing. Today we're gonna talk about and uh, review this little scanning microscope from Grandium here. I'm gonna show you how I used it to uh, scan a slide and later we're gonna talk about the specifications. Who is this for or who is it not for? and what I like about it and what I would maybe improve about it. So the microscope slash scanner Ocos comes in this case. It has a couple of stickers because it already visited a couple of places. But basically the case is pretty robust but portable. Open it for you. And here he is. I want to show you how it comes out. It comes out in one piece. Our friend, the Ocos, that's him, he has a little screw here to keep the scanning stage uh, together and all these parts together. And before we start scanning, I'm going to unscrew this. Okay. We carefully remove the screw. And obviously to start working, it needs to be connected to electricity. So, I hope you will be able to see it. There are not too many options here, which means you will know exactly which cable to plug in. Regarding the uh, buttons on this device, there is exactly one there. The on and off button. So, let's connect. So I have my scanner prepared and a couple of slides. And to initiate, we press this button, the on off button. It is flashing red. And in the meantime, we can go to the grandium.net login page and I already have a login and password and you set this up when you acquire the device and you work with the Grandium team. So I'm going to log in and it already knows which device I'm using. The light changed to green and it connected to my device. I can eject the slide tray and it tells me to pull the leverage that is below to open the slide holder. I put the slide in, close it, and I can... No, I want to do new scan. I don't want to just close slide tray. So I do new scan. And the first thing it's doing, it's taking an overview picture of the whole slide. And it's going to show this to us. We have here two pieces of tissue. This is an adrenal of an opossum. And the first thing we want to do is add scanning areas. We don't want the whole white space to be scanned. So we're adding scan areas. We have this blue dot and we mark the quick ones. And we mark the scan area. But we can refine it even more by clicking Trim All. And it's trimming us these tissue pieces automatically. And we can obviously adjust it. If it's not perfect, we can adjust however we want. But this looks pretty good. And one thing that we want to do is to 
start the light view first. Zoom in and focus with this screw. And it's going to tell us if this focus is in range or not. So if I go too much out, focus not in range. Anyway, you do as good as a job as you can. And then you have a little autofocus button here, which you can click, and then it's going to take care of the rest of the focusing. So now we can stop the live view. I will zoom out a little bit and we can start scanning and it's going to show us how many seconds it's going to take to scan this image and it's moving and scanning and it's going to give us a pulse light image in 130 seconds. So let's wait a little bit. I like very much that it doesn't have to scan the whole slide, that you can pick exactly the areas where it's scanning. What I would like even more if um, I could draw around it and not have to adjust those little dots. But that's a really minor thing. Another thing that I like is that it's so minimalistic. I like that it's so simple. It has one button. The button uh, has different colors of lights and uh, there is an instruction sheet what each of them means. They're mostly important at the beginning when you set up the device, um, which I already did before with the Grandium team. But basically you have to... It's a computer inside. It has um, NVIDIA chips and it has um, AI, um, artificial intelligence solutions to automatically find different things on the slide. And for example, this tissue that it automatically trims and probably other things. Basically, it's a computer in the form of a microscope. And it's also storing the slides inside of itself. So it has enough of uh, memory, enough of graphic cards that um, it has those slides. I think we are done here. Okay, so we scanned it and we go to our scan archive. And here it is. We can change its name if we want to. We can see what the label is underneath. It was an educational slide from Penn State. And we can click to open the slide itself. And we have a whole slide image. We can zoom in now. So this is, uh, like I told you, adrenal from an opossum. And it is infected by Vesnoitian, apicomplexum parasite. It makes those big cysts and we have here the bar, the scale bar, so we can see that one of those cysts it can be even up to one millimeter in diameter. Let's say this small one will be 400. And this is how they look from close, pretty characteristic picture. And obviously we have uh, inflammation around and some hemorrhage. Those adrenals are pretty destroyed. But we have our whole slide. Now it's still streaming the slide, so to say. But we can export it. So let's go to the scan archive again. And first we have to do the export receipt because we have to uh, tell the destination. It can be either, either USB storage or web download destination. I'm going to choose the web download. It's going to download this slide 
from you from the web and I can choose the format and you can choose between Aperio SVS, TIFF and Permit TIFF. I will take Aperio SVS. And now you can export. It's going to ask me where to save it. And obviously those slides are big. This one is 2.3 gigabytes because these are all slide images. They're always big. And it tells me, oh, you can save. I don't really want to save it. I already have it saved. But other things that we can do when we open this slide, we can share it. And we can share it via link. It gives the link to the uh, URL where the slide is located. We can copy the link. We can send it per email or we can just start a session. I'm not going to do this because I'm the only one. Uh, now I will be the only one in this session. So I'm just going to cancel. But basically, this is how it supports telepathology. You scan it. You call your friend who uh, is an expert in apicomplex and parasites. And you ask them, oh, are these, what are these forms called and how do I describe it? And is it common or non common or whatever you want to ask. If you want to just view the slide on your own, you click this navigator and you can pan through the slide. It's basically a whole slide image. It took us 130 seconds to scan it. And if you need an instant consultation, then you can just do it. You'll, you know, you have a whole slide tray, you review them. The ones you know, you know, and you write your report. The ones you want to consult, you can consult. Or if you're not a pathologist and you're working with slides and you want to consult the pathologist, you can also use this. So that's basically how it works. So what you have just seen is a whole slide scanning microscope. It is a microscope, scanner, and a computer at the same time. And its features and benefits include its infinite portability. It's small and light. It's just 3.5 kilos, so you can put it on your desk. You can take it with you, put on another desk, put on a shelf. Basically, very portable device. It is for both live view and scanning. So you can apply it to just looking at uh, certain parts of the slides in the live view or scanning the whole slide. You can use it immediately after setup. And it can be integrated at any stage of your workflow, um, meaning whenever you want. You can use it for uh, case archiving, for case um, sharing. It is a low throughput device though. It just um, scans one slide at a time. So you basically put one slide at a time like in a microscope. And it is complementary to a conventional light microscope and high throughput scanner. So if you're using a microscope for your normal work and you just screen or um, review your cases under the microscope and then you come across something that you want to scan, you take the slide, you put it into the uh, Grandium scanner, scanning microscope. Or if you have a high throughput scanner in your institution for certain applications, but you want to just share one slide and you don't want to uh, use the whole scanner or you need to wait till you have enough slides to scan to scan this particular one, it's also a complementary device to this. And the specifications uh, here, Things that are very important for me is that the um, resolution is uh, 0.48 micrometers per pixel, which is comparable to what other uh, high throughput or multi-slide scanners are doing with the 20x objective. And it takes around two minutes to scan a 15 times 15 micrometer uh, specimen. And you can uh, have different image formats, TIFF, Pyramid TIFF, or an SVS, SVS file. And it just weighs 3.5 kilo. It's small, 3.5 kilo, that's less than 8 pounds. 
and uh, 18 times 18 times 19 centimeters it's less than 8 inches so you saw how small it was so how I would use it personally in my work I'm a toxicopathologist and I would mainly use it for consultations something that we do on a daily basis if we come across uh, lesions changes that we are not familiar with we go to our colleagues and consult it with them, with people who uh, might have already seen it, have more experience. And um, toxicopathology for drug development is um, reviewing the lesions that uh, potential future drugs can cause for uh, tox safety studies. So you have some compounds, some group of drugs where you know what the lesions are going to be, but there is plenty of drugs where you don't know what the lesions are going to be. So you cannot really expect what's going to happen and consultation is a big part of our work even for people who are experienced illustrations i would want to later show these uh, things to my colleagues and for education we sometimes have uh, seminars uh, if somebody comes across uh, interesting cases they can use it to to educate other colleagues or if you're in academia or any other setting where you want to use it for education you can do that as well what um, or who is this device for? It is for the people who want to complement their pathology workflow with digital slides and telepathology. And it is not for those who need a high throughput device for the, their pathology work. As I said, it's one slide device. It complements your workflow, be it your uh, analog workflow with the microscope or your digital workflow that is high throughput. If you need to scan a particular slide, this is the device you would use. What I like about this a lot, I love the minimalistic design. I love that it just has one button, that it's just nicely looking. There is nothing superfluous in this device. I love the portability. Um, now we work from home. So having such device at home and be able to connect to uh, colleagues, uh, you can share the slides that you're scanning via a link um, and you basically can have it in your home office. Take it to your real office if you want to. I love that it's portable. It's easy to use. It really tells you on the screen exactly what to do. Uh, the um, software, cloud-based software is um, is very intuitive, so easy to use. Totally non-disrupted to your workflow. You don't have to get rid of the microscope or get another device. You just put this thing on your desktop, uh, on your desk, and you use it for whenever you want and for however you want, for whichever use. It has a cloud-based operating system, which I like a lot because basically anywhere where you can uh, you can use it anywhere where there is internet you can even use the uh, internet from your phone and uh, this is how the grandium team is showing this at conferences they connect with their phone so if you wanted to you can even use it in the field with your cell phone data and it's connectable uh, via wi-fi and it has an open api uh, but this is more a feature that is to um, if you if you are a software provider that would want to uh, use this hardware piece and apply your software so you can uh, you can do it there is an open api and if you talk to the team they will um, be able to collaborate uh, on that with you things that i would improve is first setup experience so I was in a little bit of a unique situation. I was not the first user of the device. If you purchase it, you're the first user. I was uh, testing it. Uh, so it was already checked by some other people and I needed assistance with the first setup. Um, so I would like this to be a little bit uh, streamlined. Maybe it is when you buy it new. And if not, it was not really a big deal. Um, I but I had to contact the Grandium team. I would like the live view to be a little bit more parallel to the um, light microscope. So you have a little bit of a lag because of its connect, uh, connection to the internet and to the screen. You don't have the 
real life like microscope experience. You have the digital experience, I would like it to be a little bit faster. Then there is this option for uh, trimming the scan area. It's minimal, but I would like to be able to draw around it instead of dragging the uh, little dots that are there. And what would be great to have, and I know the team is already working on that with uh, uh, partners and on their own, to have integrated image analysis tools. So, for example, if you need to quantify some IHC, whatever, uh, something uh, that you want to quantify that you would have the tool with, uh, within the scanner already. And one thing that I uh, think would be great to have is an integrated cloud storage of the slides. Currently, the slides are stored on the device. So the device has to be on and connected to the internet uh, to be able to see your slides. So basically, if you don't have the device with you and you didn't download the slides, you cannot show them. There is an option uh, to integrate it with different cloud storage providers. Um, but it's not something that comes with the microscope. So I think that will be a nice add-on. And if you want uh, more info about this device, uh, you can read the uh, blog post uh, with a little bit more detail, or you contact the Grandium team and they will be able to, uh, ask, uh, to answer any questions that you might have about this device. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening. For more great digital pathology resources, visit the Digital Pathology Consulting website and subscribe to our newsletter on digitalpathologyconsulting.com. After subscribing, you will get access to the free annotation guidelines, which will help you annotate slides consistently in all your digital pathology projects. Talk to you in the next episode.